Have the boys service that visiting Cherokee and tie it down overnight. Mm -hmm. That young couple will be flying back home tomorrow. They're staying with her mother and dad, people named Jarvis, oh, Dale and Alice. That's how I first met the Jarvises. The next morning, they were back to see the kids off. That son-in-law turned out to be a good pilot. He took my word for it that the airplane was properly serviced and then made sure for himself. Five minutes later, they were on their way. I explained to the Jarvises that in a little more than four hours flying time, the young people would reach their home airport 600 miles away. The Jarvises were very nice people. I hoped I'd see them again someday. We'll probably have but I didn't expect Dale Jarvis to turn up in my office within the next minute or two. Welcome back. I'll have to make this quick. I gave my wife a pretty thin excuse for coming back in. But look, could I learn how to fly? Can't see why not. Well, I'm no spring chicken anymore, but seeing what an easy trip those kids had in that rented airplane, I mean, 600 miles in four hours. That's a hard day's work on the highway. You'd be surprised how many other people are making the same discovery. And you think I can do it too, huh? Certainly. We can give you an introductory flight now and you can prove it to yourself. Oh, not now. My wife's out there in the car waiting for me. Well, how's Saturday at nine? Well, I'll never learn any younger. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, uh, Miss Crawford, schedule me to fly with Mr. Jarvis Saturday morning at nine. We'll take 5-8 Willie. Oh, what's 5-8 Willie? The call letters of the Cherokee you'll fly. You'll see them painted on the side of the airplane. Uh, here's some material, information you might like to look over. Say, there is one little problem. My wife, I'm afraid she wouldn't approve of this, so let's not tell her about it. I'll put a golf bag in the car to throw her off the trail on Saturday. Oops, I better conceal the evidence. See you Saturday. Next day, when Mrs. Jarvis drove into the parking lot, I was afraid the cat was out of the bag. So her first remark came as quite a surprise. Good morning, Mr. Barlow. Good morning. I've come for my first flying lesson. For what? Well, you do give lessons, don't you? Oh, yes, certainly. Well, I want to learn. If that daughter of mine and her husband can flit around the country in an airplane, so can I. Can't I? Well, uh, uh, yes, certainly. When would you like to start, Mrs. Jarvis? Oh, would um, 10 minutes from now be too soon? Well, all my instructors are scheduled, but uh, I have an airplane available. I'll get you started myself. Well, that would be fine. There's just one thing. Can you keep a secret? <laughs> I'm keeping a few right now. Well, my flying lessons must be kept secret. Isn't that all right? Oh, yes. Yes, certainly. You see, I don't believe that my husband really approves of flying, and so he mustn't know a thing about it. Well... Where do we start? We started with this as an airplane and went from there. First, I explained to Alice how and why an airplane flies by showing her how the wing produces lift. The air passing over the top of the wing creates a sort of vacuum which produces upward lift. Even if the engine stopped, I assured her, an airplane continues to fly, with the nose lowered slightly to provide enough speed for continued lift and a gentle glide. 
I explained that Cherokee would glide 10 miles from an altitude of 5,000 feet. Then the control surfaces, the ailerons which bank the airplane. Right aileron down, left aileron up simultaneously, and they bank the airplane to the left, and so the airplane turns. The stabilator controlling the attitude of the airplane for level flight, climb, or descent. And the rudder, which swings the nose left or right. Inside the airplane, I explained the instruments to her and they made sense. An ordinary magnetic compass, the speedometer, a gyro compass, an artificial horizon to show on one simple instrument whether the airplane is level, turning, climbing, or descending. A clock, altimeter, turn and bank indicator, and another to show the rate of climb or descent. The engine gauges, as in a car, fuel, temperature, oil pressure, ammeter, and a tachometer. Clear! Well, that was the beginning of my double life. Alice Jarvis proved to be a good student and made excellent progress. When Saturday came around, so did Dale Jarvis. I showed him how the airplane flies hands off because it is so inherently stable. Then he tried the controls. To go up, just ease back on the wheel. To go down, a little forward pressure. For a turn to the left, a little left wheel to establish a gentle bank. And then to straighten out, a little right wheel to bring the wings level again. In a few minutes, Dale was right at home with the controls and enjoying it all. He followed through on the controls as we glided toward the runway with flaps down to slow us up. Back on the wheel, raise the nose, slower, and then settle gently on the run. This is your pilot's logbook. That makes it official. You're on your way to your pilot's license. Good. You know, I thought that flight was great. I'd like to try it again next Saturday. Fine. Let's go in and make an appointment. All right. I was strictly the man in the middle as the Jarvises made steady progress. Landings. First solo for Alice. And then for Dale.
and plenty of interesting homework. Study in the pilot's information booklets for both of them. My opportunity to end the secrecy came when both Dale and Alice were ready for the cross-country phase. I scheduled myself to ride as instructor with Dale and also with Alice at the same time. Okay, fine, we'll see ya. Bye. Well, are we ready for our big cross-country? Well, yeah, but I wonder if you'd mind sharing the cross-country with another student. Oh, we'll take our bigger Cherokee 6. It flies just like the one you and he are used to. He? You mean a man? Well, yes, the other student's a man, but he's very agreeable. I think you'll like him. If he pays attention to his own pilotage and lets me take care of mine, we'll get along. Fine. You go on out, and I'll bring him just as soon as he gets here. Okay. You know that he's five minutes late already? Isn't that right. just like a man? I'm sorry I'm late. My wife took the car. I had to take a cab out here. Uh, what'll I do with these golf clubs? Oh, we'll leave them out there in the hangar. Okay. Well, I'm all ready for the cross country. Fine. Uh, we do have a problem, though. Oh? Well, I wonder if you'd mind sharing the cross country with another student. Well, after all, Ted, I had an appointment. Yeah, but she was booked for the same time. She? A lady? Very charming. So far as I can tell, she's just your type. Well, okay. You've got yourself a deal. Thanks. Uh, you go on out and introduce yourself. I'll be out in a minute. All right. Alice. Dale! Are you following me? Following you? Of all the Sneaky, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what are you doing here? Well, I'm going flying. I'm cross-country with a gentleman. Well, is that so? Well, I'm going flying on cross-country with a... with a lady? Oh. <laughs> oh, and you told me you were playing golf. Oh, Dale. Oh, I didn't mean <laughs> Dale and Alice quickly saw how the air maps are especially designed to easily identify features on the ground. Two lakes on the chart look exactly the same from the airplane. That seems simple. Then we practiced radio navigation. Omnidirectional radio beacons can be tuned in and they blanket the country. To navigate to an omni, Rotate the bearing selector until the needle is centered and the indicator reads two. The course to fly is shown on the outer dial. To reach the beacon, keep the needle centered. Then passing over the beacon, the needle flips and the two indicator now says from as if by magic. Alice and Dale were delighted to see how easy it was to navigate by radio and to reach their destination. We landed for lunch before heading home. Dale and Alice were full of new ideas. I'm amazed at how simple it is to make a flight like this. It's, uh, well, it's like driving, only so much faster. And so much more pleasant. You know, I'm surprised at the comfort of a modern airplane. Yeah. Well, personal aviation has come a long way. By today, you have government weather advisory, the flight service stations for in-flight information, and uh, a great many fields have Unicom. Well, you can even call in and have them order you a taxi before you've even landed. You know, 
I thought that flying would be hard to learn. Actually, I'm finding that it's, well, fun. Well, modern airplane design has improved right along with the other facilities. Uh, for example, you take the tricycle landing gear. That makes the airplane want to roll straight down the runway. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it feel so secure upon takeoff and landing, huh? Mm, that and the lower center of gravity. <laughs> Is that also why I haven't bounced the airplane on landings the way I expected to? <laughs> when the kids came to visit, they flew in a rented airplane. Is that rather common practice? Yes, very common. Uh, whether a person rents an airplane or owns one it may depend on how much he uses it. Uh, the pilot who flies a great deal will probably be justified in owning an airplane. You know, it's a funny thing. My father learned how to drive a car when he was a grown man. Here I am learning how to fly an airplane, and I'm middle-aged. I can see where flying can open up a whole new world of opportunities in business, in recreation. And getting to see the kids whenever we want to. Oh, I should say. Ted, you've given us a lot to think about. Besides, I like to fly. And so do I. Well, good. Then let's get back at it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's pretty much the story. The Jarvises have their pilot's licenses. A whole new field of interest is opened up to them. Flying is an adventurous new interest that they enjoy together, especially when they make trips to see their daughter and her husband and their new grandchild. 